little history about today's recipe. First off, they are called chocolate chip oatmeal coconut pecan cookies. And if you told me I was gonna taste one of those and like it, I would say absolutely not, because I'm not a fan of like over stuffing cookies with things. I like your basic chocolate chips, but you know, I'm kind of simple. I like my pizza plain, I like my sandwiches, just your basics, so I'm a little picky on that front. But when Jenna served these cookies in the Catskills recently and I took a bite, I was like, what is in these cookies? They were so good. So it's worth the effort. And there's a few special things I want to tell you about the ingredients, so I thought I'd make a nice demo. And here we go! All right, we're going to start by melting one and a half sticks of butter. Okay, I've got my butter softened. Note that I did make a TikTok about this recipe already, so if you want to watch it in short, quick form, you can do that. The description and the ingredients are below the video here in the, in the YouTube link. And if you're watching, please subscribe. That would be so nice. Thank you. So we're going to add one whole cup of brown sugar first, a half cup of white sugar. Now I'm going to give that a stir. Just cream it up. How have you been? It's been cold and snowy. Lots of snow this winter. But we're getting through it. Next, we need one whole egg and one egg, egg yolk. So what I'm going to do first is crack and get a yolk out first, because that way if I mess it up, I have a second shot. So let's get an, there we go, get that white out. So one yolk, boom. And next we're doing a whole egg. That's going right in. No messing around. <laughs> So you can use a mixer, but I like to show it without a mixer whenever possible because I know a lot of people don't have big standing mixers and maybe they don't even want to bother taking out a hand mixer. So, you know, a little, a little workout never hurt anyone. Okay, next up, my friend, Penzi's Vanilla, and you can do two teaspoons of this. I'm just judging, measuring as usual. Meh. <laughs> now, since there's more than two dry ingredients, I am going to do them in a separate bowl, which, you know, I don't always do. But in this case, because we have a good amount of flour and coconut, I want to explain that and do it separately. So we'll start with one and one quarter cups of flour. One and one quarter. Perfect. So this is shredded coconut and it's finely shredded like this. It's not like more stringy where you normally get like shredded coconut that you decorate with. This is finely, finely shredded, unsweetened coconut. And make sure that you do not go looking for this and buy coconut flour by mistake, because that will not work for the cookies. You definitely want it to be actual coconut, but you want it to be finely shredded and unsweetened. So that's what it looks like. <laughs> And let's get a half cup of that into this mixture. Good old Red Mill shout out. So there we go with that. And lastly, where's my... And lastly, into the mix, we will... Maybe, if I can get it open. Oy. <laughs> One teaspoon of baking soda. So we want to combine that pretty nicely before you add it to the wet ingredients. <laughs> now... As I do in my TikToks, you add the dry to the wet, just like that. And we give that a stir. So this is going to be a thicker dough, which is what you want because you don't want these cookies to spread flat. So they're a nice, thick, thick, lumpy dough because it's already, it's already feeling like it's pretty thick and I still have to add some oats. Now we need to add one and three quarters cup of rolled oats. So I'm pointing out that I'm using purely Elizabeth. Hi, Elizabeth. And maybe I'll send this video to her because we go way back. <laughs> anyway, it is gluten-free, this brand, but you can use regular rolled oats. That's typically what it calls for. This is what I have in the house just because it's one of my favorites. And um, I've been buying this for years. I actually got my father hooked on, on the uh, purely Elizabeth. So <laughs> I'm uh, committed to the brand. So we're gonna do one and three quarters of a cup. Let's try and get it almost right. <laughs> it's, you know, one-ish. I'm just gonna use this one and 
Okay, it's sprinkling all over the place. <laughs> but I think I got about a three quarter in there. So I've got that in. This is where it gets really thick, but this is what it's going to make the cookies nice and fluffy and not flat. So we mix this. Now we've got our chopped pecans and chocolate chips. And what I did find out recently, these happen to be the Hershey's just because I have them on hand. But in the city, I bought chocolate chips, Ghirardelli brand, Ghirardelli, how do we say that? But that brand and the chips are bigger. So I'm very excited to make that discovery. So if you want some bigger size chocolate chips in your cookies, go for the Ghir Ghirardelli brand. <laughs> I can't no. say it. One, two, three, boom. I think I wish I could play some music while I'm doing this, but it will be impossible to edit if I put music on. When I do the recipes on TikTok, I actually play the music the whole time I'm baking and I blast it because then I get into my zone and that's what makes it really fun. So in case you know me from TikTok, believe that I am dancing my ass off when I make those videos. All right. So now I've got a nice thick dough here. I'm going to come and show you. Look at that. We are not messing around. This is thick. This is not drippy at all. <laughs> this is thick dough. It's going to make nice fluffy cookies. I hope. Here we go. Guess what? New cookie sheets. That's right. It was time. Those other ones were starting to look really bad on camera to me, so I had to fix it. <laughs> and I've had these nice ones in the city for a while and I don't bake in the city that often so I thought I'd bring them here and use them so yay here we go we're going to take nice big size chunks this is like Leven cookie cookie action I guess I should clean up but whatever so I've got nice size cookies like this I'm making big lumpy making nice big shapes like that out of that batch we got about 15 nice sized cookies spread across two cookie sheets and of course I saved enough a little bit of dough so I can eat that because it's good <laughs> all right let me wash my hands and we'll put this in the oven so I've got the oven preset to 350 degrees we want to bake these for about 10 or 11 minutes the key thing here is not to over bake them because we want them to remain soft so even if they look a little underdone when you take them out they're still going to be good because they'll kind of continue to bake a little bit on the cookie sheets so in we go uno dos Whoopsie, one moved. <laughs> one started to roll away. So we have 10 minutes to wait and we'll be right back. They've been in for exactly 10 minutes and I'm going to take them out and show you. Okay, they spread more than I would like. So next time I'm going to err on the side of adding a little extra flour. When they come out, you can sprinkle some coarse... Ah, we have visitors. When they come out, we can sprinkle some coarse sea salt on top of some of them. I'm not gonna do it on all of them because we, if some people don't like salt on their cookies, I'll do it on this tray. So that is it. They are definitely flatter than my last batch. So I would err on the side of a bit more flour and I'm gonna put the larger amount of flour in the description below so that you get the right fluffiness. But they are gonna taste just as good. If you like them flat, do them exactly like this with this amount. But I will make a note. Now let's taste one. <laughs> mm. Delish. Shout out to Jenna for sharing this recipe with me so I could share it with you. Thank you, Jenna.